Um, I was tasked to build a 56 kilobit uh, nationwide network for the National Science Foundation, and at the time there was not a lot of um, of uh, experience doing that, and we built one connecting the supercomputer centers and then connected the regional nets and then I decided there needed to be documentation so I wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Internet and then um, got tasked to write a book which sold a bunch of copies and I was probably the... And then I started teaching everybody what the internet was and spent two years of my life doing that. Probably the biggest, ch one of the biggest challenges is people not understanding scoping issues. That people would, salesmen would come in and say, I have this box which could e do email for 300 people. And these people would say, well, we could just buy 10 of those boxes, but they wouldn't sort of talk to each other or they just, basically a lot of administrators didn't understand what we were trying to do and we're, think, we're sort of not picking, solu seeing that the solutions we were picking were designed to be scalable rather than have some limited uh, size in them. I think the aha moment of my career was I was sort of a software system programmer kind of guy for the first 20 years of my career and I was then sent to networking school and so it was a two-week class in networking taught by Dave Mills who's sort of old father time of the internet. His thing is um, how to synchronize clocks across the internet and um, he sort of taught me the internet protocols and it was just as oh my god it was it's like simple and it makes sense, and so that's when I started down the uh, networking road. Uh, having faith in us to uh, try to build this network um, was probably the most critical thing. Uh, Tim O'Reilly reading The Hitchhiker's Guide and wanting me to write a book for him, and uh, Dave Mills for teaching me uh, internet stuff. <laughs> This is going to sound really funny. Um, if anything, I started looking at my career and started thinking of the movie Forrest Gump. Because it's sort of like, if you look through the, about a 20 year history of the internet, I, I just happened to be in all of these, <laughs> these places along the way and uh, just sort of popped in and there was this thing happening and, and so I... I, I did a lot of things which helped a lot of people get connected is all. One of my big fears is the whole um, po pol politicalization of the internet. Um, I guess I should have said that one of the one of the things which sort of also sort of stymied me in my early internet career was the intransigence of the um, telephone companies. Um, we were trying to do these things and the telephone companies just didn't understand and they didn't want to deal with us because they were busy selling voice lines and didn't see that we were even a market. and. I guess the, so I started off my career worrying about big business getting in the way of the, not so seeing this as a business opportunity, but standing in the way of it. And now with the uh, net neutrality stuff, um, it's sort of the same thing all over that we need to pu uh, protect the ability of innovators to build an application and use the internet um, in a way they see f fit and not be possibly constrained by some business interest that it competes with. They need to keep trying and um, 
they need to be sort of more worried about pushing the technology than making the big app that's you know because if they're pushing the technology the opportunities for them will come even if sometimes you can even produce an app which fails or something that fails but it spurs other people who then see what you did wrong and you're, you're likely to be recruited by them to help them do the right thing the second go around. It goes back to the telephone, uh, the telephone company thing is, I never thought the internet would expand as fast as it did and the, the availability of bandwidth would come into being as fast as it did because um, I, th I thought, well, even if the, the uh, phone companies had sort of such a lock on the bandwidth that existed at the time that even if they decided to sell us what we wanted, um, they would want to remain control of it and then sort of, and at the time fiber was a new thing and then suddenly um, everybody who had right-of-way was laying fiber down it and uh, trying to get rid of excess capacity and the, um, so I didn't see that coming so I was you know, you know the whole the whole sort of thing about well we could just stream video over the internet was sort of a oh my god you're going to waste all that bandwidth doing that you know it's not designed for that but you know I mean there there's certainly a lot of um, momentum behind 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 the, where the internet is going so i don't think think it's going to be very easy for anyone to say let's slow this down or let's uh let's uh you know do a like censor it or anything um however there are sort of uh threats to it there's this again the po politicalization of it there's right now there's this thing about uh, the uh Spanish government using uh, the dot cat domain as a a uh, bargaining chip against the uh, Catalonia secession thing. There was somebody coming to this conference who couldn't get in the country because uh, to collect their award because the U.S. government wouldn't let them in because they didn't have a street address. Um, just you know. <laughs> Stupid little stuff, and we need to keep them that neutral. Who knows? Um, certainly, certainly, we also we need to get a better way to get the internet to the um, crazy, sparsely populated places in the. Uh, in the United States, even and um, the, I mean, there's sort of this the, the third world problem of they don't have enough money and all this kind of stuff. But if you you know go, go to you know Montana where there's three people per square mile, it's there's no internet there and well, there's not even cell service. And I spend a lot of time in Colorado, and it's sort of amazing to see. Uh, people out there who've never been without cell service in their life and they sort of let's meet up I'll call you and it's like <laughs> you know. anyway that's so we need we, we need to serve everyone better even if it's at low bandwidth and low speed and